how challenging is it for one to start this upskilling process? Because some people will say, you'll hear people say, no, I haven't done school in such a long time. So they feel, you know, it's, it's going to be tedious for them and they're not going to be able to cope. Um, talk to us through the challenges and what are some of those things that the people could do to overcome them? Okay. So some of the challenges... Um, it's, it's very common. Um, so, for example, we don't see them as um, pitfalls at all, but um, we more see them as, like, restraints. So a lot of the time you'll sell an NQ4 to somebody and they'll say to you, how many hours a day do I need to study? And that's something that is impossible for me to answer because, you know, I can have two learners sitting at a table and I'll never forget, they both had to answer the same question. One took two hours and the other person took 30 minutes. So it really depends on the person's knowledge that they've gained, their experience, their dedication to it. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our uh, Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining us. It is a weekday and it's 7 p.m. So you know what we what time it is. It's time for us to talk anything and everything property. So tonight I have two special guests who are going to talk to us about how to upskill and improve your property knowledge. As you know, this is the one of the reasons why we have this podcast to bring you on the past information and to help you to upskill your knowledge and your skills. So Courtney and uh, um, Janet are joining us t- tonight from Prop Academy. Um, Courtney and Janet, good evening. Hi. Good evening, Timmy. Thank you for having us on the show. And Hope thank you, guys are you doing Private well. Property. Um, I, just, I, I just can't hear you. Just give me a minute there. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. I can hear you now. So um, let's just really jump into the conversation tonight and let's talk um, reskilling, upskilling. What does this mean and how does it look when we are in an industry such as property? Okay, so you know, I'll, sorry, I'll explain the difference between the two and then Jan can jump in a little bit. So we've got reskilling, which is something that we do throughout our career. So as we go through our day-to-day jobs, we get a new duty, something's added onto our list to do. This is your daily work life. So you're constantly having to reschool as you go through. Um, And you can do that with some courses like your CPD courses, skill enhancing courses that we've got. Whereas when you look at upskilling, that's more like when you've done your compulsory studies and you're wanting to get a promotion, we're looking at your higher qualifications. So upskilling is more when you're putting that extra effort into getting your higher qualification. So from your NQ4, you would then go to your NQ5. You can even go to NQ level six and facilities manager, or you can side jump into commercial property management. But that's when you're actually doing something in order to grow with a higher education. And I'll really throw this question to Courtney and say, um, with the new technological um, advancements that you guys are seeing, how different has the... Um, your offerings, your training offerings, and your upskilling and reskilling offerings been for for the different um, players in the market? So um, when lockdown happened, everybody freaked out completely. And I think Prop Academy was the only really excited um, company because we finally got to do everything online. You know, we're not wasting reams and reams of paper and having our learners send three or four files through PostNet. So from that point of view... We were very blessed to have got our e-learning CETA certification um, and we put everything onto a new platform. We've actually been through two platforms because of them allowing us to do more and more online. Um, It's been such a great learning curve for all of us. What the nice thing is, is if you are busy answering a question, you can push save and you maybe haven't finished the next five questions, but you need to go into a meeting. So you don't have to worry about a thing. You can come back later, carry on. And once you're happy, you can push submit. And only once you submit, your assessor is also answering, I mean, marking your work online. So from that point of view, it's just been amazing. It has been a learning curve. Um, the, The 
older agents have surprised us by their willingness to actually get this kind of, you know, take on this challenge. It hasn't scared them as much. Uh, you know, the younger guys, they're used to it. They have their iPads at school. They come out of school, so they're very on top, they're on top form. But we've also got a good support channel to help everybody through these uh, new learning challenges. But it is way better. Um, so from that point of view, from a technology point of view, I see it just as us absolutely improving. A little bit more. You, I, I like the fact that you were you were touching on um, the adoption. You know, um, in in terms of um, people coming in and actually using these technological advancements. So, is are there any specific systems that have improved um, your um, the offerings that that may be whether e either paid or, or free services that um, people can take advantage of? If you, if someone is watching us tonight and really wants to 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 upskill themselves and wants to learn these new skills, are there any are there any specific ones that you can mention? Um, that one can start taking advantage of immediately? Of course. All of our courses start when the learner's ready. So that's one of the things that Prop Academy is very proud of. Um, we are property practitioners and always have been. I think since I was seven, my mom had me working um, on site, on an off-site development, trying to help with sales agreements. So what happened was when all of the, the regulations came through that we had to start studying, you could take a week off of your sales for that month because you were spending so much time in class trying to get your studies done. So now with it all being online, I mean, if somebody was interested in doing a course, say that you are not an estate, uh, well, a broker or an estate agent, property practitioner, and you just want to see, you know, you're busy selling your house and they might be doing it personally and there's a few things you need to look out for, you can go into our skill enhancing courses. They're really affordable and they give you excellent information. And you can pick any of them. And as soon as your payment reflects, you get started straight away. Oh, thank you so much for that. You know, so informative. If you just joined us, we are talking how to upskill and improve your property knowledge. And I'm joined by Courtney McKenna, who's the operations manager uh, at Pro at Prop Academy, as well as Janet Alexandra, who is the director at Prop Academy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you so much for coming through on the socials. We see those those different uh, green hearts coming through, and everybody uh, sh sharing how much this um, this information is so precise and is right what they needed. So through the week, we asked. Um, everyone on in, on Facebook to come through on the poll. And the poll we had, have you always wanted to improve your property knowledge? And of course, it was a given. Everybody said yes, but they they did not know where to start. And I think that is where I'm going to to pick it again, uh, um, Janet, to say, where does one start um, with with this? What in, in, in terms of which course or which um, which offering do I take? You know, I am, I don't know how to upskill myself. I don't know where to go. Where do I start? What is that offering that I can say, this is the one, whether online or on-site? You know, to me, Courtney does this all day long. I'm going to pass <laughs> it over to her. Okay, Courtney. so it's a, it's a brilliant question that you have, and it's actually directed at two target markets again. You've got your um, property practitioner who's wondering, you know, I've got my Fidelity Fund certificate. What do I do next? What do I need to do? First of all, we'll definitely advise you, if you go into the Prop Academy website, and you click on the contact us page. You can send us your details and we'll phone you in the morning and go through it with you. But what's nice about that contact us page is that it also has two new videos that we've put on recently. And the one video is for somebody who has a Fidelity Fund certificate and wants to know what is their next step. And the other video is for somebody who wants to get into the industry but wants to be ahead of the pack. You know, they don't want to wait until they've got a job because it's really tough out there to get a job if you don't have any sort of certificates behind your name in real estate. So for the guys who have nothing behind their name and they're still trying to get a job, you'll kick them off with a logbook knowledge course, okay? You don't need a Fidelity Fund certificate to do it, and it's a brilliant uh, stepping stone into the NQF level four. Now, both of those will be compulsory down the line. So as soon as they get their FFCs, those will be compulsory for them. So they're actually just getting it out the way so that when they do start working, they can actually make money selling or renting or doing whatever they do instead of studying. And then for the guys who do have their FFCs, it's your standard three steps. You've got your intern logbook that you need to do. 
you've got your NQF level four in real estate that you need to do, and then your PDE for exam. And all of that needs to be done in a total of 24 months. Your logbook needs to be done in the first 12 months. Um, where we also advise that you do your NQ4 and then you've got your extra 12 months to write and pass your PDE4. So we know in the industry there's been a lot of confusion as to the new regulations and how they're going to affect us. That is far away. We wouldn't um, put it out there unless we believed it. Janet is luckily on the board helping design the new material. So for now, as it, as it stands and for the next at least 12 months, you're going to be doing the same path of your logbook in Q4 and PDE4. That's to become a, a, a property practitioner. So a, a, a couple of episodes ago, we spoke um, on the podcast on how an estate agent can really um, pivot their career and make more sales, you know. And um, I believe that upskilling and reskilling is one of those ways that they would be able to to make more sales. What are the other advantages that um, that come with upskilling and reskilling yourself um, from perspective of you being in the industry and being a practitioner already? What are those things that that um, help you, you know, to become uh, better? at your work? So I found, um, because like I mentioned earlier, we are property practitioners and I'll never forget walking in a property with um, somebody who wanted to purchase it, a purchaser. And we were walking through and I had just been through so much knowledge, so many courses and I have um, my mother who's been in real estate forever. So constantly knowing about real estate and when I was talking to the clients, I remember that he was a CA and he asked me a financial question and I was able to answer him correctly. And it was almost as if he was testing me. And I think what I've always learned from that is the more you know, this is a normal saying knowledge is power, but the more you know, then you gain that trust of your clients. And once you've done that, they will come back to you time and time again for advice, if it's to buy, to rent, for their friends, referrals. So for me, part of upskilling is, yes, great to know the knowledge, but just also having that confidence to go out there and sell or rent more. And really, the confidence is important because at the end of the day, it's sales. And um, that's one of the things that Janet said earlier, that this is at the core of it. It's really sales. And um, I want to now jump into the biggest challenges because we know nothing really comes easy. Not, everything has its challenges. How challenging is it for one to start this upskilling process? Because some people will say, you'll hear people say, no, I haven't done school in such a long time. So they feel, you know, it's, it's going to be tedious for them and they're not going to be able to cope. Um, talk to us through the challenges and what are some of those things that the people could do to overcome them? Okay. So some of the challenges, um, it's, it's very common. Um, so, for example, we don't see them as um, pitfalls at all, but um, we more see them as, like, restraints. So a lot of the time you'll sell an NQ4 to somebody and they'll say to you, how many hours a day do I need to study? And that's something that is impossible for me to answer because, you know, I can have two learners sitting at a table and I'll never forget, they both had to answer the same question. One took two hours and the other person took 30 minutes. So it really depends on the person's knowledge that they've gained, their experience, their dedication to it. So we do battle with um, uh, trying to help with time management, which is why we have a course on our site as well for time management, because everybody's life is different. Somebody might live with their grand, their times are different. Somebody might have five people in their home. They can't find quiet time. So everybody's got those challenges to look at. But what they've just got to do is find out what works for them and then stick to it. And for us, the most common solution, and a lot of our learners have said it to us, is just to make sure no matter what happens, you complete one full question a day. So if it's question one, A, B, and C, no matter what happens, that is what you need to do. Some people want to start off with it before they open their laptop and look at work because we know what happens. Once that happens, you just get so into it. So um, that's one of the challenges is also just to be self-disciplined enough in order to do that. You've got to make personal sacrifices in order to get your qualification because you might now have less personal time with your family um, and work sacrifices. And then the last one that we have is obviously your cost of your qualification. So not everybody has, uh, you know, a seven or eight grand lying in the bank account to do their national qualifications. 
So what we do offer is um, we offer EFT debit or credit card payments. And then we've gone a step further and we've um, let uh, pay just now offer their service on our website as well so that they can break their payments into three months if they do qualify for it. And um, it just helps a lot of a lot of people so that it's not one bulk payment. I was thinking at the top of my mind, was already choosing, you know, choosing the right provider, choosing the right... A hundred percent. Choosing... A hundred percent. Yeah. You know that about one-seventh of our learners are actually redoing their course because they chose price over quality. Um, so then they end up buying their course through the cheaper provider and, like you say, actually choosing the course. They've been advised um, incorrectly or they decided to purchase incorrectly without advice and they've gone down this route, they've realized they're on the wrong course. So that's also why we're very specific with um, our clients. If they are going to buy, we have checklists to make sure they really are on the right step right from the beginning, because you don't want to have those problems down the line. Um, an excellent thing we also do is called an agency assessment. So if you have an agency and you've got five agents or 50 agents, you send us specific information and we will tell you what that learner needs to do, when they need to do it by, and how much time they have. Because we know what we're doing. And um, it, often your problem comes about where the, the learner will say to you, I need X. You need to double short, you know, uh, make sure that they uh, really do need that course. so many uh, providers and so many uh, so much information i mean we live in the in the age of big data so a lot of times it gets so difficult um, for someone to choose the right thing at the right time yes. um, just talk to and us also sometimes they could they could be exempted for you know for the court quite often people are doing a course when they're actually exempted for it and some yeah. people opt for that they say you know i know i'm exempt but i want the knowledge from the course because they've never been in real estate that's up to them but as long sure. as they understand what their options are right from the beginning Sure. No, thank you so much for that. Um, I just want to bring Janet back in here and ask, um, let's talk <laughs> about how the delivery and the mode of some of the, the courses that you offer, um, how do they look? And uh, I, I know that... Um, I know that we also just spoke a bit about um, how one can really manage their time, but let's let's talk a practical experience of somebody who's already in the course or who is looking out for the course. How does it look for them? Okay, okay. so basically um, what has happened is the education has been recently legislated with at the board. Um, it was legislated in 2008, I think it was, that um, all agents had to become compliant in education. And this was quite a, a big step for, for agents that had been in the marketplace for some time. And it resulted in them grudgingly buying their course. And they bought it not for the knowledge that they could attain from the course, but because of the requirement of legislation. So that in itself was, was a bit of a problem. But what we have done with our courses, and it, it's quite amazing because when we started we um out as prop academy our um focus was on e-learning and online delivery and where everybody else was focusing on the classroom and the blackboard and the chalk and the uh, the chalk duster or whatever that thing is called so we were totally into e-learning and what we did is we have designed our courses so that they are simple for our learners our learners go onto our platform and they will go through each module and each module will first have an explainer video it will have the learning manual that they can learn from it will have quizzes the quizzes are in the form of multiple choice um, and true and you know true and false types of questions and then there are also assignments as well um so our courses are very very easy to maneuver through and um our learners are just loving it 
I'm glad. I'm really glad that everyone is loving it because you don't really want to go into um, uh, starting a qualification and you, it's absolutely grueling for you. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah. Any advice that you would give um, different property players? And um, both of you can really come in here as well to say, what advice would you give um, to property players, people who are uh, in different categories in terms of uh, um, buyers, sellers, uh, people who are in bond conveyancing and the different ones? What, what uh, advice? would you give them about upskilling and reskilling in the in the field do it we've got some. <laughs> you you have you have to you can't go into these things blindsided you can get um you, you really can get taken advantage of and um, my very little bit of advice i'll let jenna take over but do the short courses do the skill enhancing courses gain that little bit of advice and knowledge and then always remember when you're purchasing a course from a, if you have more questions about it, we all property professionals. So you just give us a shout and we can advise you further. And that's also aimed at people who aren't agents. Um, but just take the time to do it properly. My okay. advice is that as an agent out there, um, you have to earn the trust of your clients. Um, I think Courtney said that previously. And now, to do that, you should have a wild, a, a wide array of knowledge. Now, what we're offering over and above the residential courses are commercial property management course. And that gives you an insight into that commercial space. And um, it's well worthwhile doing that type of course. We've also got facilities management courses uh, the, for the facilities managers out there, for the portfolio managers out there, there is no better thing than knowledge. Honestly, if you want to earn the trust of your clients, if you want to be the cream of the crop as an estate agent or property practitioner, you need the knowledge. And as we've been saying throughout the episode tonight, knowledge is power, but knowledge executed is even more powerful. Um, Courtney, can you just talk to um, anyone who's watching and who's prospective um, student to where where can they where can they find you guys and what um, would they would they be coming for? Like what what are your your top or flagship programs that you are currently offering? So we we offer everything from the start to the end which is why we do what we do. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can go all the way from internship to full, uh, so property practitioner or principal property practitioner, and then everything on the sides, your CPDs, your extra knowledge courses, your FICO, your PPRA. So we give you, we've made it, we've developed our company to make sure that we're not just selling you one course, we're looking after you throughout your entire real estate career. And as new things happen, we are making sure that we're the first to get out there with the correct information, put it into a course for your staff and hand it out. Subscribe to our website. On our website, you'll see a little subscribe button. Subscribe to the news and updates because we won't be the first to tell you what happens, but we'll be the first to tell you the, the truth and what is happening. So we won't rush out there. We'll make sure everything is perfect and, and advise them. If anybody wants to know which courses to do, what we've done is on our website, we have a contact us button, which I spoke about earlier. All you have to do is send us your details. And then in the morning, we will call you and we'll go through it verbally, discuss what your needs are. And then after that, we'll send you an email to confirm everything and assist you through the entire process. All right. Thank you so much, ladies, for taking our time to talk to us today and giving us such info important information that um, the, the Facebook family and everybody listening to us can actually action in, in order to upskill themselves and gain that knowledge around the property industry. Thank you so much and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for inviting us. Thank you. It's, a, it's, a, it's a definitely a pleasure. Thank you so much. And just like that, we have reached the end of our, our conversation tonight in our episode. Thank you so much for joining us and staying to, to the actual end of the conversation tonight. Thank you so much and have an absolute a splendid evening. Till the next time we see you right here on the Private Property Podcast. Have a good one.